Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. It is crazy windy outside, so I'm going to do something that I, I rarely do, and I'm going to film this segment indoors today. So for today, you can call this Buffalo's Indoors. But I've got the Marlin 1894 here. Of course, this one's in 44 Magnum. You guys have seen it over the years on the channel several different times, several different videos. Of course, it is clear. I've done a lot of upgrades to this gun over the years. I've put uh, sights on it, put this hammer spur on it from Grav Tech. I'll give you a look at this stuff. Nice little hammer spur from Grav Tech. I put the Skinner sights on it. Now, the issue we're going to look at today and hopefully take care of is the Marlin trigger flop issue. You've probably heard about it. If you haven't, you can do a quick search on the internet and you'll come up with a bunch of hits. The Marlin 1894 has this trigger that just kind of flops around and hangs there. I liken it to a loose tooth getting ready to fall out. Look at that. To the uninitiated, you might even think that trigger is broken. And cocking the gun doesn't change anything. It still flops around. It's annoying. It's noisy. Just, uh, just kind of an annoyance. And it annoys people to different degrees. You know, some people never even realize that their trigger's flopping around like that, while others just, you know, they have to get that fixed. One of the first things they do to their 1894 is get that fixed. And that's what we're gonna look at today. Mo uh, Ranger Point Precision sent me over this trigger kit that's supposed to take care of that issue. This is the trigger and sear together there. It is held together by a small spring. You don't want to pull on that too much, but to show you, show you that it's there. And that keeps the trigger from flopping around. Really nicely made trigger. I'll try to get a better close up. But that's supposed to take care of the trigger flop. And it also comes with this Wolf reduced power spring, main spring. So it's also going to lighten our trigger quite a bit. So I'm going to install these two things, this, the trigger and sear and the reduced power spring into my Marlin. And I'll do kind of a before and after. I guess we can go ahead and do the before. I've got my trigger pull scale here ready. We'll go ahead and get a pull weight on that trigger and just see how much that actually reduces the pull weight. I better hope that lever safety in. Looks like about five pounds, nine ounces. We'll pull one more time just for consistency's sake. Five pounds, five ounces on that second pull. So pretty consistent, but fairly heavy. Of course that is, like I say, that's the factory trigger. I've never, never done anything with that. But what I'm going to do is install this, and I'm not going to include installation in this video for a couple of reasons. One, YouTube's kind of funny about what they call gunsmithing videos, even though this is a do-it-yourself job. You don't have to take this to a gunsmith unless you just, you know, if you feel more comfortable doing that, you can have a gunsmith install this for you, but it's easily done at home. And the second reason, Ranger Point Precision has a great installation video on this. I can't do it any better than they did. It's straight to the point on how to install this. And I'll have it linked in the description if that's something you want to watch. But I'm going to go ahead and install this. And we'll take a look at how it looks after. Okay, so here's a close-up of this kit. Of course, here's your trigger. Up here you've got your sear. And again, they are held together by a small spring. You don't want to pull these apart when you first get them out of the package. You can damage that spring. And over here, of course, is the reduced power wolf spring. All right, so that was very simple. It took me about 20 minutes. I watched that eight minute video that I have linked in the description, those instructions. And in that video, he's using a Marlin 336, but the instructions are exactly the same. I followed them through. So here's what I removed. Here's my factory 
trigger, sear. Now remember, those are connected on the RPP piece. They're not connected in the factory unit. They're connected by that little spring on the RPP one. And of course, my mainspring. That's my factory mainspring. So what are our results? Well, we'll look at trigger, the trigger flop first. So there's our trigger. Hardly any movement whatsoever. No trigger flop. Whether the hammer is cocked or not. Definitely cured that. That's a good looking trigger too in there. Definitely cured the trigger flop. How's the trigger pull? We'll get our scale out. These lever actions, you have to remember to press that lever safety that's up under there when you're doing your trigger pulls. Let's see. Got two pound, seven ounces. Yeah, two pound, 7.1 ounces. Let's do one more, just for consistency. Two pound, 7.6 ounces. So very consistent and much, much lighter. And something that I didn't take into consideration, changing that mainspring, I was just thinking about the lighter trigger pull, but the smoothness of the action, that how much easier that action is to work. Of course, you don't have as much pressure on the hammer, so it's just a lot, a lot easier to run that action. This is amazing, actually, how much easier it is to run that action. Also, of course, the downside, anytime you lighten a trigger, um, you run the risk of light primer strikes. I don't expect that to happen. I am going to get this thing out and shoot it a little bit before I close this video. But I use Federal primers when I reload and all of my 44 Magnums are reloads. And I've shot, I've shot them through some actions, some single actions that have been really lightened up and really slicked up. I've never had an issue. So I don't expect any problems with light primer strikes. If I do, I'll just pop the factory spring back in and call it a day. But I don't really think I will. If you shoot factory loaded ammunition, you just want to watch and not get the stuff with the harder primers. Now this trigger kit, uh, not sure if I mentioned it at the first of the video, but Ranger Point Precision sent this over for me to look at, install, and, and kind of share with you guys. That trigger kit runs about $118, I believe, uh, last time I checked on their website. And I've mentioned this before, I don't like to talk about prices on my videos because I plan on leaving these videos up for years, and of course prices change. Sales happen, prices drop, prices go up. So don't hold me to that. You'll just have to check their website. I'll have it linked in the description. But very easy upgrade, and I would definitely consider it an upgrade to your Marlin lever action. That being said, I'm probably going to not get to shoot today because it's so windy. But I'll, when I appear back on the screen... It'll be tomorrow, and hopefully it'll be a little better day outside, and we'll just run a few rounds through it and see how it functions. Now that's more like it. We got blue skies and sunshine today. Check out that harsh shadow there. Hello. <laughs> All right, I'm down here at the range. Of course, I should have mentioned earlier in the video, you can get these triggers in different colors. I chose the black, but you can get you can get them in silver or gold. I like the way that this gun looks kind of sleeper-like, traditional. But if you like a little bling on your guns, you may want the silver or the gold trigger. I've got this thing loaded up with some of my hand loads. These are, the bullets are 240 grain Hornady XTP. But they are over a max charge. They're loaded very hot. So, let's see. If she'll shoot or not. That's what's important. <laughs> oh, yeah, she'll shoot. That trigger is so light. That's going to take some getting used to. I'm used to that big, heavy trigger. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow. That's a big, heavy, 3 8 inch steel thick target that that, that round is rocking back and forth on that backstop. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, that action just sounds so much better because there's less force pushing the hammer back. So she shoots and she shoots well. That's all I've got today, guys. That's all I really wanted to cover. But I've got to pick this brass up. I'll talk to you guys again soon.